back. I am well on the way with my interview with Karen Cross, political activist and a lifelong comrade who is having some difficulties with her beloved party right now. Oh, Mark Golding's PNP, Karen Cross, you've had a lot to say about the party as an institution under Mark Golding's leadership and uh, about the quality of Mark Golding's leadership by itself. So, Mark Golding's PNP, from your perspective, what is wrong with it? PNP does not exist under Mark Golding. That's a, so there's nothing wrong with the PNP. Uh, but it doesn't exa exist under Mark Golding. What, what we presently have is um, um, a leadership that has basically taken control of the, a group of people that have taken control of the leadership of the PNP and has put the PMP in a precarious position of... Um, you mean they've captured the PMP? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is captured what you're saying? It to, tre to treacherous behavior and all of that. So, um, and so the PMP is, at, is, is, is at, a, at a risk of losing our identity as a result of that. But when you say that the PNP under Mark Golding does not exist, give, give me some more. What do you mean? Because for all intents and purposes, it is represented in the parliament as the, the, Her, Her Majesty's loyal opposition. Mm -hmm. It exists at Old Hope Road. It has spokespersons. It has a party leader on paper and a, and a party leader in practice. It has an opposition leader. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by the PNP doesn't exist under Golding's leadership? PNP is an idea, you know. PNP is a, the PNP is a, is a great big idea mm. still a work in progress in terms of achieving its full potential as a party that norman manley meant it to be uh, i'm never one of those who quarrel with what the delegates choose yes um, but then we found out afterwards that delegates weren't actually delegates yes. and um, so to speak um, we have already um, litigated that several times but um pmp have what almost forty-five thousand members and for me, and I'm speaking for me now personally, is that to choose the only white man in the PMP, the only person who comes from a leadership of the plantocracy, the only person who has history seeped in the ownership of slaves, that idea for me is unacceptable. Mm. And and that was what that is what that's what first motivated me not to support Mark Golden. Plus Mark Golden have done nothing for the People's National Party. He was always just hanging out down in South St. Andrew with, with um, Omar Davis until he got the seat. Um, during his time, his short stint in the People's National Party, Mark Golden has not proven that he has the chops to be a cohesive and unifying leader for the People's National Party. So after identifying those things that I don't agree and would not vote for him on those principles that I just stated, yes. he was elected. And he still had an opportunity to prove that he, he can cut it. But Mark Golden is the kind of character that doesn't feel that he should prove anything to us common um, descendants of slaves. Mm. And um, he is comfortable in that little uh, balloon that he is and he feels that there's no need to reach out to anybody. And I tell you that, against the background that, every conversation that I have had with him about anything to do with moving forward and unifying the PMP to include people that did not support him and does not still support him and do not like him, his singular response is always, but they didn't support me. Oh? Yes, that's so, a singular so, so he's response still holding to, on to he's, He still holds on to that. That's his singular thing. And i give you an, an example. After the, the race for chairman and general secretary, during, uh, during the race for chairman and general secretary, I made a pitch to him. I said to him, don't be afraid of Paulwell. Paulwell is a party man. And I pointed out to him that Paulwell came into the party as a loyal soldier and supporter to P.J. Patterson, because P.J. brought in Philip Paulwell. And after P.J. left, Paulwell became like chief police guard for Portia. Yes. He was her closest advisor and closest friend. Yes. And um, when Portia left, he became chief supporter of Peter Phillips. Yes. So he's a party man. Yes. He, he supports his leader. Yes, man. He yes. supports the leader. He supports his party. He transcends any kind of personal thing. 
So I was making the point to, Paul, to Mark Golding that you can trust Paul well because he will do what is necessary and what is right for the party first, and he will support his leader. Yes. But then I went further to make the point that Paul well is also a, the kind of person that have political capital throughout all factions of the PMP. Mm. He will be good for you. He'll be able to bring the factions together for you if you send him out on that mission. And he, he went back to his original thing, you know. He didn't support mm. me. He supported Lisa. And you, and you believe this is a fatal flaw? <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. But, 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 but if, we, if we examine the fundamentals of why you're not a Mark Golding fan, Karen, mm. Mark Golding's antecedents, as you've outlined, they are not reflected in his politics, an observer would suggest. And they'd say that there's, nothing, there's been nothing about Mark Golding's behavior since he came to the front line of the PNP and of the, 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 what, the, the party's mission as a, as a senator, then as a minister, and now as party leader. There's nothing about him since that time. There has been nothing about him since that time which smacks of a man carrying himself like he's a member of the plantocracy. For, both, for, for all intents and purposes, people accept Mark Golding as a nice man. There's no question about his intellectual uh, ability. Yes, there's no question about his decency as a human being. So some people will hear you say, well, will hear what you say and say, well, it seems as if Karen is inventing some things to disqualify Mark Golding as a person she can connect with on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a reasonable level. Mm -hmm. And that is behind some of the things that you have said about the party under his leadership. How do you plead to that? I am not trying to, what do you call it? Um, paint a picture of him. Yes. That that he's not a decent person. Uh, I'm not going to answer the question um, to say that whether he's a decent person or not. I'm yes. not going to opine on that. Um, but, but, but here's the thing. But I hear you. But here's the thing. No? Remember, no, you have said what you have, you have put on the table what you make of his antecedents, mm -hmm. his, 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 his lineage, mm -hmm. and what he represents through your eyes. I'm just giving you because the people watching us don't have the benefit of speaking directly to you. So I'm channeling what I've heard people say about Mark Holding and say, well, there's nothing in how he does his politics which suggests that this is a man who carries himself like part of the plantocracy and a man disconnected from real people and cold and unfeeling to support Karen's fundamental reasons for not liking Mark Golding. And I'm just asking you to respond to someone who would see you and say that to you. Can I give you a little history lesson? For sure. And um, we are at a unique history lesson. Yes. <laughs> when, the, when Nazi Germany started their purge, yes. and Hitler and his guys put together the plan for that final solution, yes. um, so it is called, um, they created a smoke screen that was not revealed to the world for many, many decades later. When Hitler lost the war and the whole thing fell apart, Germany was splintered into sectors. The British had a sector, the US had a sector, the Russians had a sector, the Americans had a sector. And lo and behold, the French had a sector. And in the French sector was Jews, Jews of all caliber, musicians, artists, Doctors, I mean Jews, living comfortably yes. in a section of Germany that um, the world didn't discover till decades later. What was that for? That was a smoke screen that after Hitler achieved his goals, he could present them to the world and say, see, all the things that you said we did, we never really did. See them here. Mm. Look at them. Look at their hospitals, look at their schools. Tight into Mark Golding for me now. Of course, of course. Tight into Mark Golding for me now. Mark, Mark Golding is that kind of guy yeah. who um, gives you something else. Mm. Wants to be a part of the, the crew with the dancing and the, the excitement. But sometimes, sometimes people also do things to try to escape their, their antecedents, so, uh, so to speak. I wouldn't have to spend much time to, to, um, to, to, to just going over it and litigate it over yeah. and over again. Mark came from... Um, his ancestry are slave owners. They came from England, mm. um, and he was—he is, by all definition, the last of the um, the heirs of the 
plantocracy and the um, is Margaret and Amanda love poor people. But, but hold on, Karen. But hold on. So, so you, you, do you realize, though, mm -hmm. that based on how you have mapped Mark Golding's lineage through your eyes, mm -hmm. you, from the start, have failed and are failing to even give him a chance to connect with you on the level that you would have connected with previous leaders of the PNP? Is that fair to the opposition leader, the PNP president? So let me ask you a question. Yes. If you're the head of an organization, say there's like a crew here in the studio. Yes. And they started talking crap about you. Yes. What would you do? Well, it, it depends. Are they talking crap about me from a fundamental perspective? In other words. Doesn't matter uh, what perspective. It does because. He, he, no, it doesn't. Wait, no, let, me, let me tell you how. Let mm. me tell you how. Let me tell you how. Mm. People will say, and I'm putting it back to Mark Golding with the, with, the, with the example that you've drawn for in mind. Mm. People say, look. We could accept Karen Cross being cross with Mark Golding if it is that by virtue of Mark Golding's actions, she has seen it fit to write him off because of things that she has seen. But we don't get to that yet. But we don't get to that yet. No, but we don't get to that yet. But, 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 but yeah. that I'm saying so people, mm. so, so right, mm. but people are saying that, look, Karen has written off Mark Golding just based on the man's antecedents. No, that is not it. No, 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 that's part of it. I'm not misquoting because you're here to talk to me. No, but that's just part of it. We don't reach the next part of it. I'm saying, but hold on, I'm saying, it is more palatable for people to accept that, all right, Karen says Mark did this and did that, and she is not a fan, she is not in support of his leadership, fine, I can accept that. But they're saying they are, they, 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 it's problematic for them because they're saying, but, but Mark doesn't have anything to do with how he was born. <laughs> he doesn't have anything to do yeah, with that. that. And Mark doesn't carry himself like a member of the plantocracy. He's a nice, decent man, play dominoes in South St. Andrew. He, he, he don't mean much, but I'm saying he doesn't insulate or separate himself, and I can't accept her saying. So here, here's, here's the importance of what I've said, mm. I'm kind. Yeah. They will say that, look, she's looking for a reason to justify mm -hmm. her dislike for the party leader mm -hmm. and building a straw case on antecedents and ancestry when Mark had nothing to do with any of those things. But having, us, having us, um, succeeded at, 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 at gaining the leadership of the People's National Party, in spite of what I have stated and how I feel about him in that respect, yes. I just gave you an example of his response when I suggested to him that he yes. should not be afraid of Paul Wells. Yes. I give you another example because I'm telling you some yes, of the reasons why he doesn't your fit story the enough. profile. Yes. He doesn't fit the profile of a PMP leader. Yes. Yeah. Um, when Raymond Price lost to Dave Gamble, yes. I phoned him again. And I said You mean the Gen Sec race? Yes. Yes. I phoned Mark again. I said to him, listen, Raymond didn't lose by that much. Raymond is a good guy. He's a good spokesperson to have around. Don't throw him out and leave him in the wind to twist. Find something to do. Include him into something. I'm not talking about me, you know. Yes. I'm talking about helping him to, to show that he wants to bridge the divide and he wants to unite the party. I'm yes. giving him ideas, yes. suggestions. So I said to him, don't throw it, Raymond. Help him, man. give him something to do. And I gave him the classic example of Michael Manley. Michael Manley was famous in the PMP for when you get up to criticize him about something that he should do, he, he, he would get up, give a big speech about it, and then appoint you the head of whatever it is that he should do. Yes. And said, if you can do it. So I was giving him that. And once again, he griped. But Raymond didn't support me. And, and I spoke to Raymond and I met with Raymond and Raymond didn't support me. So Mark's entire leadership style is based entirely on who supported him and who did not. Mm. And if you did not, you are not welcoming Mark Golden's PNP. And those are some of the fundamental issues that PNP people, including myself, have with him. Yes. Throughout these last nine months, he has done everything in his power to make sure yes. that people understand that if you weren't a part of his campaign and supported him, he has nothing to do with you. And on that note, we'll take our final break and come back. We have one segment to go on the conversation. Karen Cross is with me. We're not done yet. Thank you.